Hello everybody, it's Chris Kandai and welcome to FAQ, Faith and Quarantine. Each day of lockdown we've been looking at the Bible to explore often unexamined parts of it to see how they might help us live well in lockdown. I don't know what kind of day you've had. I've been in Zoom meetings, it seems, since I woke up until now. And Zoom is incredibly exciting. I've travelled all around the world. I've been to the US, I've been to Leeds, uh, I've been to London. Uh, but now uh, I'm ready to be here at home. Lockdown has definitely had some advantages. Less travel, less environmental impact, but all sorts of challenges too. Uh, life in lockdown is like a pressure cooker. We're hearing all sorts of ways in which families under more and more stress. It's causing all sorts of issues to come up around domestic violence and the abuse of children. That's something that I, as a charity leader, am really passionate about fixing. What can we do to prepare our nation for the tidal wave of children that are going to come into care as soon as they're seen by school teachers when lockdown finishes? I'm going to have to try and make good decisions. And maybe you've got similar decisions to make at work or in your family. Where do we go for guidance? Where do we go for wisdom? Well, I believe the Bible and the book of Proverbs in particular has lots to help us with. This is number four in a series of wisdom for lockdown. And if you've missed any of them, have a look on YouTube. And while you're there, like and subscribe. That really helps me know you're there, but also helps other people to see this too. Or if you're watching on Facebook, please like and share. That helps people know that you're finding this helpful and hopefully they will be helped as well. Now, chapter four of Proverbs offers another insight into why it makes sense to pursue wisdom. So I'm going to read a bit, comment a bit, and then I want to share with you some Proverbs about anxiety. Right, here we go. Chapter four of Proverbs, verse one. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Here it goes again. The whole context of Proverbs is is a familial context. There's wisdom we can pass on to those that we love. And we pass that wisdom on with our lips, but we pass it on with our lives. If we speak wisely, but act unwisely, that's no good. If we act wisely, but don't explain it, our kids won't be able to pick up on this. So there's a familial context for wisdom. And it's something I need to know as a dad, that what I say and what I do needs to go together. Verse two. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Here it goes, this intergenerational learning. There's wisdom that can be passed down through a family line as, as grandparents teach parents who teach children who teach their children. This knock-on effect of wise living and wise thought can have impact not just for now but for generations of our descendants to come. What an amazing privilege. Whatever you invest in yourself now in the acquiring of wisdom is going to have generational impact. Who knows how many people the ripple effect of your wisdom is going to have uh, uh, impact on. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. There's an imperative, isn't it? Do everything you can to get wisdom. Pursue it. I don't know about you, but you don't often hear that. You tell people to pursue their dreams uh, or to pursue money or to pursue status or influence. But wisdom, that's not normally something we're told to pursue. Our culture doesn't seem to value wisdom as much as it should. And so this is quite a countercultural idea. Make wisdom your highest pursuit. Verse six, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. That's interesting, isn't it? That you can be faithful to wisdom. Uh, wisdom gets personified later on in the Proverbs. And many people would say Jesus is the ultimate embodiment of wisdom. But that discerning attitude, that humility that recognises it needs instruction, that's a really useful thing to hold on to because it will protect you. It's like a superpower that you develop, the ability to make right decisions and you get it by pursuing it and receiving it as a gift from God. Verse 7, wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Wow, how much would you pay to be wise. Do you remember King Solomon was asked what he would pray to God for and he asked for wisdom and he was told he made a very wise decision. So what would it cost you to get wisdom? What would you be willing to pay? 
why would it be worth the investment? Uh, I remember watching a film about a guy who um, made a wish to be the luckiest person on the planet. And that was what he wanted, that every time he rolled the dice where he made a decision, it all turned out well. It, luck was going to be on his side. That's what he really wanted. Well, the Bible says, no, 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 it's, it's not luck that you need. It's wisdom. It's the ability to make the right choice under any circumstance. That right choice will have an impact on you and your life, but it will also impact other people. Therefore, it's to be pursued above all things. It's worth whatever you can pay for it. And actually, weirdly, you don't have to pay for it. It's a gift from God. And the book of Proverbs, as we read it, is rebooting and restoring and resetting our mind about what really matters. Some people call that neuro-linguistic programming. That sometimes if you've got an anxiety or a disorder, you can talk yourself and reboot your mind into doing something different. The book of Proverbs is saying this in a slightly different way. It's by meditating and reflecting on these proverbs that your brain becomes attuned. It's a bit like people that do Sudoku, that uh, it's hard the first time. But it's like a brain gym. It begins to reset the way that you think and do maths. The more you do, the better you become at it. Same with crosswords, isn't it? There's a skill that you acquire. The book of Proverbs, by meditating on it, by allowing it to, to come into our mind, stick around there as we think about it and process it and, and mull it over, is doing something really positive for us. And God has designed that. This isn't magic. This isn't ultimately even psychology. This is God saying this is what your brain was designed to feed on and once it's in your brain and in your heart it then gets translated to your life so it's a really interesting uh, mindset now th there's been a whole school of thought about how we do learn things do we learn things from brain to heart to action or do our actions shape us well I would see that as a helpful feedback Luke actually that there are patterns that you do you train your body don't you that you 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 develop um new habits and those habits kind of keep you in uh, a good way of living so my, my body now doesn't feel right unless it gets up and does the joe wicks uh, set of exercises that habit that we've got is a virtuous circle i do it every day and if i don't do it something has gone wrong so i, I think we can learn the proverbs and embed them in our minds and our hearts and try to live by them but as we live by them we set up a bunch of helpful disciplines and habits that will help us to be more wise and live wisely and allow it to go from my head to our heart to our actions and then back to our head to our so it's going to be a virtuous loop as we reflect and try to live out these proverbs wisdom is supreme therefore get wisdom though it cost you all you have get understanding esteem her verse 8 and she will exalt you embrace her and she will honor you she will set a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor i love how rich this language is it's very personal isn't it it's talking about a father passing on wisdom to their son it, it's familial but he also describes wisdom as a woman as, as someone that you would be faithful to that that will bless you that a bit like those guys that get off the airplane in hawaii i don't know if they still do it they get a garland of uh, a, a lay don't they a garden of flowers around uh, their necks as a sign of honor well, that's how wisdom will treat you. If you treat her well, if you honour her by living well, she will honour you by providing you with a reputation of wise, godly, wholesome living. And that's a really, really lovely picture. So each, each day we've been looking at a different part of the early chapters of Proverbs, which are, are kind of helping you value wisdom. And it goes on and on about it because it's such a countercultural idea. But by the time you get to the rest of the Proverbs, you get kind of more, uh, I suppose, thematic, practical wisdom. And I just want to share with you some Proverbs that I found helpful as they deal with anxiety. Uh, many people are noticing a spike in kind of mental health related issues because of lockdown, because of all the news we're hearing day by day about increasing numbers. Um, there's new news today about a, a mysterious 
um, illness that seems to be affecting children. The coronavirus hasn't seemed to affect children as much. But now there's this new thing that 100 children around the world have got and they, they've never seen it before and they think it might be related. And that's causing people to be anxious about themselves or their kids. Uh, or maybe we're anxious about loved ones as the coronavirus rips through care homes and our care home population are some of the most vulnerable people, some of our most dearly loved people too. So what do you do? How can you deal with anxiety? What's the Proverbs got to help us with when it comes to anxiety? Have a look at Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. That's true, isn't it? There's something heavy about anxiety. It weighs you down. It's, it's like a, a ball and chain around your neck. It's like ballast, you know, stopping you from moving forward as much as you want. But what will unlock that? There, it, now, for sure, there are mental health professionals and psychologists and psychotherapists that need to play a role. But there's also a kind of lay person's role. There's something that we can do. And if we, if, we, if we do it sensitively, we can be a real blessing. A kind word cheers it up. There's a lot of people that are saying they don't actually talk to anyone in a day because they're isolated. And they're becoming more anxious the more isolated they are. And so a phone call, a, a, a little note, a letter, some post full of kind words could be a way that we can help someone in this time could be a kind word you need to speak to yourself it could be a kind word from scripture maybe there are particular parts of the bible that have helped you in the past revisiting them in this time could be a way that you speak a kind word to yourself proverbs seventeen twenty two: a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones that's interesting. We've been talking in previous episodes of FAQ about the psychosomatic relationship, that we are not just bodies and we're not just minds, we're embodied minds. And what we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves can impact our bodies and how our bodies are doing can impact how we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. And the Proverbs uh, approves and, and endorses that mindset. Uh, it says again, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. There's something about trying to find joy in the middle of this difficult time that can speak life into the rest of our bodies. That's a really hard concept. But again, it could be developing this attitude of gratitude. Yes, there are terrible things going on, but are there any things that I can take comfort and joy from? What can I be thankful for. I know there have been these lists, five things that bring me joy. Um, well, 